What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is six reasons American English actually makes sense. Obviously by Lost in a Pond, his links will be in the description. Awesome channel. Uh, this could go down quite a few different routes. Uh, maybe the spelling route, potentially uh, pronunciation route, and some others, different meanings of words as well. So without guessing, let's get straight into it. Smash that like button if you wanna see more Lost in a Pond uh, content. It's been a while since we've done it, so let me know in the comments and smash that like button, I'd seriously appreciate it. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Like, why not? Why, why not? Like, it's, it's red if you hit it. We don't like red buttons on this channel, so get rid of that red button and be subscribed. Um, and yeah, let's get straight into it. Six reasons why American English actually makes sense. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to English. If you can understand the words that I'm saying now, that means you have at least a decent grasp of English and Lawrence speak. Very true. Um, if you can understand what I'm saying is then you've got very good grasp of English because I miss out half my words. <laughs> but one person's English, whether that be vocabulary, spelling or pronunciation, might not be the same as your English. And yep. often differences like this lead people to be suspicious of the other person's English, to somehow think, if only in a jovial manner, that their brand of English is inferior to mine. A common example of this, I have to concede, is when some of my fellow Brits like to criticise or poke fun at American English. And I have to admit, when I was younger, I was one of those Brits. Oh, Lawrence, man. He's a, he's a changed man. He's a changed man since he's gone to America. My point of view is, do whatever you want, as long as you're happy. If you say aluminium or aluminium, I know exactly what you mean, because I know of it. <laughs> like, you don't have to explain it to me. I'm not going to poke fun at you. It's happy days. But then I went to university and two things happened. One, I interacted with American students. And two, I did a useless degree in linguistics and took a module on English varieties. And after that, my mind was opened. American English wasn't wrong. It was fascinating. It's a variety like of English like whose point story of has often been lost to time. Because just as there are countless fascinating histories behind the words we use in Britain, the same is also true of the United States. And so without further ado, here are six reasons that American English isn't wrong. Let's go. The longer that I do this channel, the more examples I discover of words or language concepts that we perceive to be American but actually originated in Britain. And on this subject, I've talked extensively about soccer and aluminum, but I think my favorite yep. example is the word herb. To oh my day. To be fair, I could have guessed this one came up because it's going to go in because obviously you guys pronounce it herb, don't you? Um, without the H. Which, when I first heard it, if you if you see my reactions, I can't remember which video it was. It was quite a while ago. I was, like, mind blown. But a lot of people pointed out our honour and stuff like that. And that, it makes sense. We miss, we don't go hour. We don't go honour. We say honour. So, maybe it's not as crazy as I thought. And, again, end of the day, I know what you're on about. It just, it was just, it made no sense to me why you'd got rid of it. But now I look at them words... I completely get it. I do get it. Well, Brits, hearing Americans drop the H on the word herb can often feel weird. But here's the yeah. thing. Back in the day, we used to do it. There was a slew of words that entered the English language via Old French that incorporated a silent H. Wow. This included honour, hour, hors d'oeuvre, and there yes, you go. herb. But Brits just stopped pronouncing it herb in, I want to say, the 19th century because it was soon considered the way commoners spoke and the upper classes can't be having that. And so eventually, in Britain, it was dropped altogether and America, on the other side of the ocean, didn't get the memo. <laughs> and when it comes to this, there are actually two other things that make us Brits a little bit hypocritical when judging the American pronunciation of herb. Firstly, we're forever dropping ages. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but recently I've had an air cut. That's northern for hair. Haircut? Have an haircut? Oh yeah, to be fair, I probably, again, I am Northern English, so I'll probably, oh, I've had an haircut. Yeah, I would drop a H, and um, I was at work the other day, and I said lateral flow test. Lateral? I, I, I miss a T out of la lateral. It's lateral flow test, isn't it? But I was like, oh, I've had a lateral flow test. So I miss letters out all the time. I am literally the worst person to judge. I, I'm not gonna... I, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> and secondly, before we start handing out diktats on how to pronounce the letter H, some would suggest we might want to learn how to pronounce the word H. Some, not me. I'm open to multiple interpretations. But the fact remains that in a dictionary, H. the word H. H ends in an H, but it doesn't start with one. Oh, and while we're on the subject of pronunciation, that brings us on to this. You know, in Britain, we're sometimes very quick to judge the way in which Americans pronounce words, maybe because it's so markedly different from the way we do. But this I feel like it isn't, again, my perspective, it isn't 
trying to poke fun at it, it is just kind of shock when you when you hear it for the first time. You've never heard that before, and you're like, you mean this word? You know what I mean? And I imagine it's the same when I pronounce some words or miss letters out. It's just like, what? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Uh, but when you know what it is, it's, it's all happy days. This hasn't always been the case now, has it? Because as many of my subscribers have asked me over the years, Lawrence, is it true that features of American English are similar to the way in which people spoke in England in the 1600s? To some degree, yes. A good example of this is that back then, most of Britain would have pronounced the R in words like card. That linguistic card. phenomenon is okay. known as roticity and is a large feature, of course, of American English today. In Britain, it still survives in pockets, like in the southwest of England and also Scotland, but it's ceased to be a feature of British English in most other parts. There you Obviously, go. one of the big differences between our two forms of English. Yeah, I'm trying to think of examples. Colour is the main one, I believe. Obviously, aluminum is spelt differently as well, and I can't think of any others off the top of my head. I, I imagine there's loads out there, but on the spot, colour is the main one I can think of. Again, I would pronounce the way you guys spell colour as collar, but it's an easier way of saying it, and if you know it is colour, then fair play, fair this play. This is the way in which we spell words, and maybe because most of American English derive from its British equivalent, we in Britain feel almost duty-bound to voice our disapproval of how Americans spell words. But I feel like we have to be careful about that because there is, in fact, quite an orderly nature to a lot of American English spelling rules. You know, I used this example the other day. If you're ever confused as to why Americans use the suffix I-Z-E as opposed to I-S-E, then two things. That's not always the case. Because secondly, okay. American English likes to distinguish between words that came from Greek and have the suffix I-Z-E and words that came from Old French that have the suffix I-S-E. Oh, so wow. in American English, for every internalize, you also have exercise. In Britain, we tend to not make this distinction whether the word came from Old French or Greek. It usually ends in ISE. And you know what? Fair play. I, I never knew that. And it kind of just shows how cultured you guys are. You're taking part in the culture as well on your words. We just go, yeah, nah, blanket S, uh, ISE. You know what I mean? But I rate you guys actually go cultured. It's fair play. Fair play. And to me, I'm perfectly fine with this as well. Additionally, we like to be puzzled as to why Americans drop the U in words like colour and honour. Yeah. But the truth is, we actually did the initial change. Because in wow. Old French, from which words like this derive, the words colour and honour were spelled just as they are now in an American dictionary. There you go. One charge that I often hear get levelled at American English is that it doesn't have many kind of fantastical words like Britain does. But having lived here for as long as I have, and crucially having done this channel, I've learned that America has coined some absolutely gorgeous words, some of which are used only in the United States, some of which okay. are now archaic, and some of which actually made it to the rest of the English-speaking world. So these words include snollygoster, cattywampus, fuddy-duddy, wangdoodle, pulchritudinous, humdinger, doohickey, valedictorian, lollapalooza, ornery, poppycock, not a British word, <laughs> malarkey, cahoots, discombobulate, panhandle, can Discombobulate? Is that not an English word? I mean, some of these are some... Boom. Hit him here. Poppycock. <laughs> what? and highfalutin. Now, sometimes, every now and again, I'll be on Twitter, which was my first mistake, and someone will gain a lot of traction simply by saying, I hate the way Americans say soccer, it's football. Now, I say soccer nowadays. I even say it to my mates sometimes as well, just because I'm so used to saying it for you guys on my channel. Just, just for the sake of getting the right spot. You know what I mean? I don't want confusion. Don't bother me. I'm not going to go over the fact again that the word soccer was in fact coined in Britain. Yeah, it Instead, was coined I'm in Britain. I'm going to highlight Britain a fact well. that many people just seem to forget, and that is that soccer isn't unique to American English. The Very word true. is used in Canada, South Africa, Australia, Ireland, and occasionally England. Between you and me. Yeah, soccer. Um, again, I feel I feel like soccer is only that because it wants that worldwide appeal. I guess I, d I actually don't know why it's, but it's a banging show. It used to be banging. I don't watch it as much anymore. But if you're into soccer. Check out Soccer AM. It is a good it's show. It's time we stop caring about this, especially since us yeah, Brits have been using it. American English all our lives. You see, the thing is, the English language has a plethora of words that were coined in the United States. Sadly, plethora wasn't one of them. In addition to the hundreds, if not thousands, of technological words that the country has given us, it's also added gimmick, hangover, okay. hassle, oh, wow. fudge. 
I knew about the hangover one. I didn't know about gimmick. Hindsight, Butch. lengthy, belittle, okay, and hello to name a few. Language is ever evolving, and whether we're talking about British, American, Australian, Canadian, or New Zealand English, so long as we understand each other, that's all that matters. Could you understand me throughout that? <laughs> right, well, well, we'll do some retakes. That's it for this. You could probably understand him more than what you could understand me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like I said at the start, go and check Lawrence out. His links will be in the description to Elise's channel. And if you want to go and check his Twitter out and all that, they will be on his video. Absolutely awesome. Again, I, I mean, I've made it pretty clear. I've got no issues with any American English. And um, I rate it. As long as I can understand you, you can understand me. We're talking the same language to me. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter if you're dropping T's or H's or whatever. We're talking the same language. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button. I'd seriously appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button as well. You're absolute legends. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.